Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I haven't really felt like having outdoor costume adventures lately, mostly because the weather has been, well, Canada. So while I was staying cozy and indoors, I thought this would be a good time to work on another underlayer project. Specifically, a 1900s bustle pad. These were common in the late 1890s and through the early 1900s, and helped women achieve the ideal silhouette of the era, accenting and augmenting the hip and derriere proportions, and also giving something for the waistband of skirts to rest on, and help them not droop in the back with the copious amounts of pleating going on. Since the markings are key to the placement of the quilting and tufting, I marked them out with carbon paper. And when I realized that yellow carbon paper really doesn't show up well, I went over the markings with pencil, and went with blue for the other half. Once I cut out my two pieces, I realized they really were too thin, and you would see the stuffing inside. So I cut out two more pieces and flatlined them to make the bustle pad stronger and the fabric more opaque. Then it's time to tackle the darts. Technically, the original bustle pad this pattern was based off was sewn entirely by machine, but since my 1916 Singer doesn't have a backstitch feature, I decided to sew these by hand. Once the darts are sewn, they get cut open and pressed flat. This is a bit tricky since they are very narrow. I also cut the ribbon for the ties, since these get sewn into the seam line while the main seam is being sewn. The ribbons get pinned to the right side of the fabric, sandwiched in between the two layers. I also pinned the rest of the length off to the side, so it wouldn't get caught when I was sewing. Then it gets sewn almost all the way around, leaving a few inches open to insert the stuffing. The corners get trimmed off to reduce bulk, and all the curves get clipped to help everything sit smoothly. Then it gets turned right sides out. It then gets top stitched around, keeping as close to the edge as possible. Then it's time to stuff. A while back, I cut a lot of my cabbage, little scraps of fabric, into, well, coleslaw. And it makes great stuffing for projects like this. This bustle pad gets stuffed in stages. First, the outer edges get stuffed to about an inch high, taking care to decrease the amount of stuffing near the corners, or else it would cause a noticeable bump in the silhouette. Then, starting at the outermost line, all the quilting lines get pinned into place. With every row, I started from the middle and worked my way out to try and keep things even. Then each quilting line gets stitched down. Since my machine has no backstitch, I left all the threads at the end long so I could tie them off later. This part was definitely a challenge, and there were parts on the pad where I had to go slowly and urge it through the machine, but I do like how it turned out. And if you don't have to re-thread your bobbin halfway through a project, did you even sew? Mm -hmm. 
Once all the lines were sewn, I went through and tied off all the long ends. Then the eyelets get marked with an awl. Technically these can be done with metal eyelets, but I decided to hand sew them with silk thread instead. Once the eyelets are sewn in, the rest of the stuffing gets added, to make it as full and poofy as desired. Since this is my first one, and I want to wear it while history bounding, I decided to err on the side of less poofy. But it still takes a good amount of cabbage to fill it up. Then the raw edges of the opening get turned under, and closed with a top stitch. Then the tufts get stitched. This is just a few little tight stitches at each spot to hold the stuffing in place and keep it from bunching up as you wear it. And with that, my bustle pad is done. This was a pretty simple project and could easily be done in a day. It takes a little bit of getting used to when wearing, but I have no doubt it will become a steady part of my history-bounding wardrobe.